So it's now week four of Point Blank Music School. It's a little bit cold outside at the uh, Osmond Road campus. Let's go inside, it was a bit warmer. <laughs> And we're in class. Hi, Anthony. Hey, how's it going? So, in sound engineering, we've got an assignment, and that assignment is to create a cover track, and we're going to record it with live session musicians. It's a group assignment, so this is my group. Dominic, Ross, and Jasmine. Who isn't here? The cover song that we've chosen is Wonderwall, because who doesn't love a bit of this? And we're going to turn it into a drum and bass song with a bit of this. But anyways, before we go about and do that, I'm going to go speak to our instructor, Anthony Chapman, and we're going to learn about microphones. Microphone 101, Sweet. okay? Three basic types of microphones that we always use in the studio. We start off with the most recognizable and the most common, okay? So that's a sure SM58. If, if, if anybody says to you, imagine someone on stage singing into a mic with a mic in the hand, you're going to imagine one of those. This is what we call a dynamic mic. And a dynamic mic doesn't need any power to be run, okay? You just plug it into any preamp and it'll work. Their characteristics are, they don't sound very even, like the, the frequency response isn't that even. They don't have a hugely high output, so you need to have a preamp you plug it into to get quite a lot of level out of it. But they're really sturdy. Um, you can see this one's had a little bit of punishment already. That's yeah. kind of what this is for. And you can put them in front of really loud stuff. In the studio, occasionally I'll use them for vocals for the, with the right singer, but what we did today with the drums, we have two of these and we put them under the drums, one under the floor tom, one under the hi-hat, and they're what I call my crush mics. So basically, we drive them really hard, we really compress them, and then we use that to add a bit of flavor to the rest of the drums. So the next one is, this is the AKG C414. It's this a very a, pretty microphone. It is very gold, very blinged out. Yeah. This is a condenser mic. Condenser mics need to be powered, so we have to use phantom power. So pretty much any modern interface or console is gonna have phantom power that can drive it. The characteristic of it is it's got a much more even frequency response. So you naturally tend to think that something sounds a bit more realistic when you listen to it. Uh, and they've got a very high output, so they don't need as much preamplification. The downside is they're not as sturdy as dynamic mics. And then the third, the ribbon microphone. Now this is the SE X1R, okay? This is a very inexpensive ribbon microphone, and ribbon microphones are the oldest. It's quite, quite heavy, quite heavy it? yeah. yeah. It's heavier yeah. than the other ones. Exactly. Ribbon technology is the oldest technology that we really use in microphones anymore. And characteristics of it are, it's quite warm, it has a bit of a high frequency roll off. It responds really quickly to transients, so it's brilliant for drum overheads, which is what we were using it for today. The downsides of it are, they're quite fragile. This one's not too bad, modern ribbons aren't too bad, but classic ribbon mics, they're quite fragile, you have to store them correctly, like usually they have to be stored straight up. Also, if you send phantom power to a vintage ribbon mic, that can be bad news. But yeah, so that's the three main types of microphones we use in the studio. And how many microphones are we using to record the drums? We're using 13. Oh my god. Yeah, that's <laughs> going to be hard to set up. <laughs> Alright, nah, let's test it out. Check, 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 turn it up. Yep, that's about right. Two plus two is four, minus one, that's three quick maths. So it's a Sunday here at Point Blank Music School. Don't normally have classes on a Sunday, but today there's a special native meetup hosted by Native Instruments, and it's right here at Point Blank Music School. So let's go and take a look. Okay, so I'm here at the Native Meetup, and I'm here with Doug McAvoy. He's one Hello. of the instructors here at Point Blank. So, what do you what do you teach at Point Blank? Currently teaching Intro to Logic, yep. Machine, and Sound Design. Cool. So I'm cool. here three days a week at the moment. What's the Native Instrument stuff that we use the most here at Point Blank? Uh, well, we have obviously have the Machine course, uh, so uh, that's all Native Instruments. Uh, uh, within Sound Design, we're using Massive, we're using FM8 uh, and Absinthe, and we're starting to look at rounds and contour um, on the Sound Design course as well. And obviously we use the complete controller in all the classrooms as well, so it's pretty integrated into, into all the software-based lessons that we do here. Have you done these Native Meetups before? Yeah, I think it's my fourth one. Wow, yeah. wow. So do you do them all the time here? Yeah. Uh, like Point Blank? It's usually always uh, a Point Blank? Thing Every two months they do them here, and yeah. the Native Instruments do them uh, all over the place. But oh, okay, yeah, they cool. do one here, I 
think every two months. Sweet, yeah. Sweet. Well, look forward to the rest of the day. Yeah, thank you. Good to meet Cheers, you. Cheers, thank you. All right, so back onto the sound engineering assignment. What we have to do is you have to get a hit song and then you have to cover it into another genre, but we're gonna be using live session musicians, a live drummer, live vocalist, and a live guitarist. And we're gonna to have to use those parts into our song. And of course, we're doing Wonderwall in drum and bass. So let's go and take a look at my arrangement. But anyways, here's Wonderwall. Anyways, what we've done is basically do the arrangement of the track. All we did was go get a MIDI that you can find online for Wonderwall, and then we just chopped it all into the individual parts. As you can see here, I mean, that's all the parts that I didn't use. And I basically just used the bass line, the, uh, the guitar, and I chucked the drums out completely because we're doing a drum and bass cover of Wonderwall. Best thing about that is that Wonderwall is 175. Drum and bass is also about 175, so no real time stretch required. Basically, chuck some drum and bass drums over the guitar and the bass line. Sounds a bit like this. And you can't really add too much to this because it's kind of meant to be a cover and the sole part of the song is really meant to focus around the drums, the guitarist and the vocalist, which is what we're going to be recording in a live studio. So you can add a couple of small things like effects, but of course with drum and bass, you gotta have the bass drop. So this is the bass building up. And then we have a drop, which sounds a bit like this. And of course, we've got the vocals going on top of that, but I'm not gonna show you the vocals yet because it would be copyright if I had that in there. Once we record our own vocals with the cover artists, yeah, I'll show you guys what it sounds like. And then that goes back into like a verse. Guitar comes back in, we build up yet again, drop again, and then we just have a little bit of an outro, and that's pretty much the track. So I'm going to export that into individual stems, like just the drums, just the bass line, stuff like that, and that way the musician can listen to it and then they can play in their parts. And that's pretty much it. That was Wonderwall. All right, that's it from me. Hope you guys enjoyed yet another episode of the Point Blank vlog. Make sure you go and check out Point Blank's website if you want to sign up for these courses. And also because there's a lot of free stuff there, such as tutorials, plugins, uh, free online courses and stuff like that. Oh, and also make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. All right, guys, I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>